In her dream, she was taking a test. The computer had three different voices. It asked odd questions about her mother and Janet and the book. It flashed printed text on its screen and made her read the words aloud, and she couldn't lie or pretend she didn't know answers. She didn't even want to lie, but she knew she would. Sometimes the dream felt very real. The computer told her to rest, and it asked Axel questions, and she could hear him answering. Then she knew it was really a dream because Axel never answered tests. Her tongue felt thick, and her mouth was very dry. A too sweet taste filled her throat, and the dream faded into nothingness. Amy? Wake up! Please wake up! Axel's voice was coming from a long way off. A hand patted her arm, hesitated, and patted her again. Amy? She didn't want to wake up. She couldn't remember why. She wanted to stay asleep. The hand patted her cheek. Two awkward, gentle pats. Amy? He seemed to be pleading with her. But Axel should know it did not pay to wake in rehab. She moaned and turned her face away from that hand. And then it slapped her. Amy, wake up! He yelled so loudly into her ear that her head jerked back and her eyes flew open then shut against the overhead lights. You awake now? Yes. The words slurred out through her dry lips. Here's some water. Open your eyes so you don't spill it. He picked up her right hand and folded it around a cup. Are we in rehab? She managed to get the words out. No, we're still up above. You can't taste the air, and I haven't seen any bugs in here. Amy took a deep breath. He was right about the air. She opened her eyes wide enough to let her see to guide the cup to her mouth. The water was the best she'd ever tasted. They drugged us, Axel said. You got more than me because you fought so much. How do you know? I've been awake a long time. I learned, down there, not to fight them because they always drug you. She finished the water and opened her eyes. She was in a small white room, and Axel was sitting across from her on the lap of a recliner. What is this place? He shrugged. Don't know. A questioning room, I guess. There are two doors behind you. One's locked. The other's a lava... A sanit. There's a speaker on the wall. That window-like thing there is a one-way mirror. We have glass like that at home. You can see out, but no one can see in. It's nice. In a house. Is there more water? She asked, and started to sit up. I'll get it. Axel took the cup from her limp hand and walked around behind her into the sanit. When she turned her head to see where he was going, the room began to go around and around. I'm so dizzy. It goes away, he said as he came out with more water. It's the drug they gave us to make us answer questions. What are they going to do to us? she asked, still only partially alert. I had the weirdest dreams. The computer was testing us. They weren't dreams and it wasn't a computer. They did give us tests. They asked us all kinds of questions. Axel pointed at the glass square. They're probably still watching and listening to us, behind there. Amy glanced at the brown mirrored glass. She had spent her life being watched and knew there was nothing she could do about it. Whether the watcher was behind a glass panel or looking at a voo screen made no difference to her. She never let them see how she thought or felt anyhow. You know what? Axel said. I think they believed me when I told them I came from outside. Why? What did they say? Nothing. But when they said, Where were you born? I said, Mercer Medical Center. And they said, On what level were you born? And I told them outside. And there wasn't any talking for a time. Then they started to ask me questions about home. How big was the settlement and where was it and who my parents were? And how did I get here? and they didn't talk for a while after each answer. But if they didn't talk... I know. But I think they believed me. None of the people down level even asked any questions about home. They just said I was psycho and there was no place like that. Amy thought that over as best as she could in her half-stupor. Maybe they'll send you home, she said. Maybe that's why we're here and not in rehab yet. That thought was frightening. She looked to see how far it was to the Santa door from her recliner, and decided to risk walking the six feet. 
It took effort to stand up. The Sanit was immense. She could stand in the middle of the room with her arms outstretched and not touch any wall. It was also clean and sparkled, and there were no roaches. There was a dispenser which, when she pressed the label button, gave her a comb, a washcloth and towel, and a medicated toothbrush. Her mouth hurt when she brushed her teeth, and she remembered the woman hitting her when she bit. Can they see through the mirror in there too? She asked when she came out again. They can in the youth shelter, Sanitz. She made a face. I don't think I'd want that job. The speaker in the wall made an odd coughing noise. The two children exchanged glances. They were still listening, Axel said, and looked as if he'd like to shut out. The two sat silent, stricken with shyness. The door next to the Sanit slid open. The same young couple who had captured them stood there. He was carrying a large tray. She was carrying a gun in her left hand. Her right arm was bandaged from wrist to elbow. Neither one looked at all friendly. Without a word, the man set the tray on the floor, just far enough inside so that the door would slide shut past it. He backed away. His partner kept the gun leveled on Amy and Axel. Neither child moved a muscle until the door had closed. They're afraid of us, Axel whispered, sliding off the recliner to go look at the tray. He seemed pleased by their captor's fear. Is that where I bit her? Her bandage? Yeah, he grinned at Amy. You did a good job. Amy didn't return the grin. She was wondering how bad the punishment would be for the crime of assaulting an authority. Oranges! In his excitement, Axel forgot they were being listened to. He held up a waxy orange and brown ball. Real oranges! And bread and chicken? And carrots? It's all real food! He picked up the tray and brought it over to the space between the recliners, then sat cross-legged on the floor beside it. Come and eat! He held an orange out to her. She took it, smelled it, and bit into it. It was the best thing she'd ever tasted even though the tart skin made her throat half close and she choked. Axel frowned. I think you'll like it better if you peel it, he suggested, and started to peel the other orange to show her how. What do you do with that part? She pointed to the pill he was discarding. Throw it out. I'm not wasting any good stuff, she said firmly and took another bite. You'll get a stomach ache, he warned. Please don't eat it like that. The meal became a lesson, with Axel as the teacher and Amy as the pupil. It wasn't until they were almost finished eating that it occurred to her. This was a test, too. She glanced at the mirror and lowered her voice. What? he whispered. The food. It was all your kind of food. None of it was like what we eat down below. I'll bet they gave us that on purpose, to see if you knew what it was. I didn't. But that's silly. They probably eat this stuff all the time. It's what we ship in. But we don't eat it. Not on level 9 or any place else down there. And if you'd been born in the city, you wouldn't know what that food was any more than me. But what if they don't have your kind of food up here? Said Axel. Why not? We eat it. It's not very good. Axel was being kind. You wouldn't eat it if you had something else. Amy chewed a while in silence. I wonder why we don't, she said finally. I think it all comes up here. Congratulations, the voice came from the speaker so unexpectedly that both children jumped. Axel bumped the tray, and carrots made orange stripes on the white tile floor. Would you mind rising, please? The committee would like to see you.